And I should tell the audience right now, as we go into Kelly's court, we are awaiting sentencing. It should be happening right now, any second, in the Elizabeth Holmes trial. This judge has had the case for a year uh, to contemplate the jury's verdict, and uh, we expect a ruling any second now to find out that in the, the range of possibilities include uh, her attorneys are asking for no more than 18 months in prison. This is the woman who started Theranos with the blood prick on the, the finger and turned out to be a fraud. Um, they want 18 months. The prosecution wants 15 years. And uh, an independent probation officer has recommended nine years. And those are pretty hefty numbers. We'll see. Okay, so we'll get back to that when we have news. Let's start with Casey Anthony. I got to tell you, I can't believe that they're doing this, that NBC is doing this. It's Peacock, their online property. This is toxic. This is like, speaking of OJ, Marsha, this is like, if I did it, his his stupid book where he purported to reveal, if he did it, how he would have done this double murder. This is her. I, I haven't read it, but I've seen the Daily Mail reports on it and the People Magazine reports on it. It just seems like a bunch of new lies about why she didn't do it and somebody else is responsible. Yes, it's a bunch of new lies plus old lies. None of them make any sense. Um, there's this preposterous um, setup where she talks about she was asleep with her, with little Kaylee in bed, taking a nap, and then she wakes up to find that Kaylee is gone. And then her father comes in holding Kaylee, who is soaking wet and, and unconscious, and tells her, um, don't worry, she was in the pool, and then I'll take care of this. And what? Are you what? Right. I mean, and she says, right. okay, I was just watching. I thought, okay, he'll take care of this. Really? That's your response to seeing your baby in your in, in his arms, obviously near comatose? I don't know about you, Megan. Oh, I think I do know about you. If you saw somebody <laughs> holding your baby, I don't care who it was in that situation, you'd be on your feet and calling 911. I mean, it, so, you know, and then it folds out from there and one thing after another. And of course, the stuff that was documented on camera in her interactions with the police, lying repeatedly about Zanny the nanny and whether she was at work that day and then pretending she had a job when she didn't have a job that she had to stop midway through their interview as she's trying to walk them to her office, which she does not have. So, I mean, right. it's, it's just, oh, it's, it's pathological. It, yeah. But the, what, the one problem is you give Jose credit. He got an acquittal in that case and against all Look at law. you, the defense lawyer. Mark, yeah. I, the audience should know. We talk about to Mark. He's like, Scott Peterson didn't do it. And Michael Jackson didn't do it. I can read into my client's eyes. They're like, okay, Marsha and I, more prosecutors, were like, mm. I, I, you <laughs> know, the, when you live with them, I mean, look, there have been clients that I've had that I've defended who I – will candidly admit, not publicly, that I know they're good for it. I mean, you have little or no doubt um, because they're felony stupid. But there are other clients who, and Scott is one of them, I'm telling you, I have never for a moment thought uh, since that trial that he was guilty. That's why uh, it's uh, somewhat comforting that uh, they're going to do a, that they've already reversed the death penalty and that they have coming up. Uh, and I believe the court is going to announce it from open court sometime in the next 60 days on the order to show cause on the guilt phase, too. I mean, if that's a retrial, it will be the retrial of this century. You, um, can you overtake believe his that that goes back to trial again? I can't even imagine. No. Oh do you, would, do you, would you think you'd be trial counsel? I don't think I would. I, you know, it was almost it's almost been twenty years. I may have my daughter do it. So let her uh, let her try the case. She yeah, was the there, and I think goes. eight years old at the time, watching uh, uh. watching. Now she's practicing in New York, but she's licensed here, so maybe I'll have her do it. Well, if we get that ruling, well, that'll definitely be on the docket of Kelly's court, and we'll take it up. So she seems to be contending in this interview. Again, this is secondhand reporting. I haven't seen it yet myself, but she seems to be claiming, as you point out, Marsha, that she. The, the father came to her with the baby wet from the pool, maybe in distress from having drowned or almost drowned. And that he he basically said to Casey Anthony, okay, you leave, you, you know, I'll take care of it. So she left and that he didn't let her say anything about it. And he instruct, he commanded her to act normal. This is her retroactive uh, explanation, I think, for all the dancing at the bars while this woman knew her daughter was dead. 
And this is why every person in America hates her guts. We think she killed her kid and then she danced on stage at like sexy mama co- co- contests and had absolutely no remorse. So now she's trying to say, I did it because my dad made me. And she completely demonizes this father who Jose Baez, without foundation, accused of being the killer in his opening statement and also made an allegation about sexual assault that was never sustained. And she renews that here against him and her brother, both of whom have absolutely denied these outrageous slanders. Yeah, and she never took a stand. So realize that we're talking about statements she's making that are uncross-examined and never challenged um, in real time. So uh, they do say that she was not given any editorial power in terms of this Peacock special. Um, Fine, that's good. That's at a minimum, you shouldn't do that. But that doesn't mean that she, her statements are being challenged in the manner, for example, Mark Garagos would challenge them in court, or I would. You know, I, there, there's no substitute for the machine of cross-examination. And she's never been cross-examined. So, you know, imagine how she would hold up. Megan, you can shred her. And it, it only stands up for even one second um, for the moments that she's speaking until you can stop and think about what she's saying. And then it falls apart immediately. And, you know, right. that we've proven seven ways from Sunday how guilty she really is. So I, I'm not sure why Peacock went for this, honestly. Uh, maybe it'll show something new. I've not seen it myself, um, I must say. I have read Jeff, um, oh my goodness, I just blanked on, on Jeff's last name, the prosecutor who handled oh. her case. Uh, Jeff? Mm, I don't have it. Oh man, so I'll get I there. Right, I, I remember. <laughs> I, hate, I hate when this happens. It will help me. Um, but he he wrote too. So I mean, when you put it all together, and then we reinvestigated the case for the show I did for A and E, um, Marsha Clark investigates, and it yeah, was I saw that. revelatory. We came up with even more evidence against her, if you can imagine that. So it's just one thing after. Wait, wait, I, I want to ask you about that. I, I want I want you to. Tell us about that. But can I ask you, Mark, so just to follow up on where we were on the the new revelations that she allegedly says in this piece, she claims, uh, again, as we pointed out, um, her dad, George Anthony, was allegedly standing there holding little Kaylee. He was standing there with her. She was soaking wet. He handed her to me. She said it was my fault, that I caused it. But he didn't rush to call 911, and he wasn't trying to resuscitate her. I collapsed with her in my arms. She was heavy, and she was cold. He takes her from me. He immediately softens his tone and says, it's going to be okay. I wanted to believe him. He took her from me, and he went away. Then she went to stay with her boyfriend, Tony Lazaro, but didn't tell anyone what happened. She says she wasn't under the impression that Kaylee was dead. She was under the impression that her child was alive. Oh, really? That's just an impression you didn't think it was important to follow up on? My father kept telling me she was okay. I had to keep following his instructions. He told me what to do. I tried to act as normal as I could. And she goes on to say this. When she was young, when she was young, she claimed he would put a pillow over my face and smother me to knock me out. That happened several times. I'm sure there were times when I was incapacitated as a child where my body was limp and lifeless. Really? Uh, okay. So he he knew just how much to smother you to where you'd come back and not actually die. He was a he was a master suffocator. Your dad, I mean the, this is this relates to the research you did on your show. Martha, about what was on Marcia, about what was on her computer, because some of that, one of the things that was Googled on her computer was something like uh, suffocation uh, and chloroform and how to use it and all these damning terms for somebody who has a dead child coming in their family. So tell us what you found. Wait, so Cindy, uh, in the early searches that were done by the police um, when the case first broke and people were not nearly as savvy, I want to say, in terms of being able to search histories and and not as savvy about computer lore. So um, the initial search for chloroform, they touted to be eight times that she searched for that, turned out to be once. And then Cindy, the mother, uh, took responsibility for that. She's a nurse. Okay, fine. However, then what they didn't discover is that if they had used both search engines, both Mozilla and Firefox, um, and something else, can't remember which ones, but they were two. They only searched one. Um, and the, when it was two that were searched later after the trial was over, it was discovered that she had done searches for foolproof suffocation and other related topics that at a time when 
uh, at a time when only she was in the house. Now, Jose Baez wrote about those. His computer expert did come up with that information. Of course, he doesn't have to turn it over to the prosecution. He claimed that the timing of those searches for foolproof suffocation occurred, were done by George, the father, as a means of um, suicide. What we determined, actually, that there was a glitch in the software. The true time was at a point when George was at work and when Casey Anthony was the only one in the house. So she did all those searches for foolproof suffocation. On top of that, it was also shown that after her first interview with the police, when they first start accusing her, they drop her back at home. And immediately that, that history, that search history is deleted at, again, point in time when she's home alone. And who else would even have known to delete that search history except the person who conducted that search history? So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, all of these things just add up. And these are not squishy eyewitness kind of um, my opinion. She looked like this or she acted like that. This is hard fact. These are data searches that she made and she alone made and then deleted. So, I mean... Imagine if you could buy an Italian sports car or your dream home for less than a dollar a day. Well, you can't quite do that, but you can own an X chair. And that is the office chair I personally use and arguably the finest office chair in the world for only $20 a month. Yes, for less than a dollar a day, you can own something that is going to make the hours spent at your desk a thousand times more comfortable and productive. And unlike a car, it, this one's going to massage you. This one's going to heat you up. It's going to cool you down. It's going to help you be more productive at work. Not only do I love my ex-chair for all these reasons, but Abby has one and she loves hers too. From the moment I first sat down in my ex-chair, I did immediately feel the difference. Trust me, when you, once you sit down in an ex-chair, you'll understand it's an immediate game changer for you. There's an ex-chair for every style, for every budget. They even offer that built-in massage, as I men mentioned, and heating and cooling. Now we're going into the warm, warm months. And depends on what your room is, right? Maybe it doesn't get heated so well. You want the cooling. You want the heat. Maybe, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and all for less than a dollar a day. Check out all the options and their amazing financing plans at xchairmk.com. The letter X, chair, the letters MK.com. No other chair can compare to the X chair. Go to xchairmk.com now. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.